Zach, that was a good bit you just did in that last recording uh, that, that, you, that, we, that you can see if you go subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> like, these, yeah. like these fine folks right here. Yeah, these ones. Woo. Oh, it's a different color now. Hang on. Ooh. Wait, no, that's also not the right color. No, that's also not the right color. There we go. <laughs> there we go. We got there eventually. Thank you to all of our so, patrons. I don't know why you are giving us money to do this, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to keep doing it. Yeah. Uh, 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 Zach, we, we, were ta- we were talking about, okay. I have a job in which I do statistical analysis, okay? Uh, uh, you know, we, we actually both have jobs where this is, where this is relevant. Um, and yeah. I am currently uh, going over the data from a survey. Um, do you know what the Likert scale is? You, you, I didn't until you told me what it was. Uh, and it is... A scale that ranks things from one to five. And and what and now slow down, Zach. You might be going too fast for the folks at home. A, uh, yeah, a, a, a Likert scale. A Likert a scale that ranks things between one and five, with the in betwixt numbers being two, three, and four. If that wasn't clear. Yeah. Now I understand if you need to like rewind the if you need to get that again. Hang on, I'll give you a visual aid. There. Oh my God. Oh no, I just drew on my tablet with a pen. Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> because it was right next to my drawing pen. <laughs> the, uh, I, I, have a, I have a fun story that uh, I'm reminded of. Uh, no, I have to do my bit first. You, you do your bit first. Right, one, one through five. Right now, 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 relax. If you're not following, okay, it's one, two, three, four, five. Now, sometimes this is modified, so it's like disagree. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. It's like it's like strongly disagree, strongly agree. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, it's oh no! What am I doing? Oh my god! What a disaster! What is happening? Oh no! Oh my god! This is what 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 is going on in this recording today? Uh, uh, right. So you had like, and I I was in a meeting right where yeah. where this was being discussed, and I got called out at that meeting for not knowing that that's called a Likert scale. And, and this is where I said Likert definitely didn't invent that scale, right? Exactly. Likert, Likert's the first person to realize that scale didn't have an official name because it never needed one. Yeah, that's a, that's it, like saying, oh, you don't know what a Nestle is? It's this clear wet stuff in these bottles. <laughs> like, my God. <laughs> No, like, you can just say one to five scale and people know what that is. It's a, it's a one to five scale. Is. Yeah. People back in the Middle Ages were saying, Oi, uh, how you rate this year's harvest on a one to five scale? That's how all peasants sounded. This was actually in, ah. like, Italy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, like, like, that, uh... <laughs> Uh, Shakespeare's company had to put that on when they were doing, like, Merchant of Venice. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, this voice is very hard for me to do. It's quite the accent. <laughs> Zach, Zach, you sound... You sound like... You sound like someone from Surrey doing someone from Louisiana. <laughs> it's the greatest compliment I've ever been paid. You're welcome. I got you, Zach. I got a, I got a Y episode for you here today. You got a, you got a Y episode. First of all, can I say that... Um, when you when you uh, just grabbed a pen unthinkingly and uh, wrote on your tablet, uh, it reminded me of a friend of mine who uh, paints Warhammer minis at his computer desk, and he went to go drink his cup of water. Oh no! And he drank paint water instead. Oh my god! Oh god. We we now have a joke at our friend group of uh, if you really want to like understand your minis, you have to uh, drink your paint water so you can uh, understand the colors that are going into them. Uh, my guy, I, I grabbed this pen. It's exactly the same weight as my drawing pen too. Oh, uh, uh, and it's like one of them like nice pens with the like rubber stopper on the bottom, so you can like move like screens. Yeah. Uh, 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 and I got this 
No, I can't. I gotta hit the button on that joke. I can't tell that joke. <laughs> oh no! I got, I got this. I got this pen at a recent um, uh, uh, Narcan training. Like I, I don't feel like there's no reason to hide that. I am CPR yeah. trained, and now I am Narcan certified. Every human being on planet Earth should get Narcan certified. Everyone should have Narcan. Everybody. Uh, 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 Narcan, for those of you who don't know, is the opioid overdose prevention medication. Uh, which, at least in New York State, is now available over the counter. Um, extremely cool, functionally harmless on people who aren't currently overdosing, but people who are currently overdosing, it will save their lives. Uh, most of the time. Um, most of the time. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. I am not a medical professional. Uh, uh, consult your local health department. Uh, yes. Uh, but also, Narcan's great. Uh, and I was gonna, I, I was gonna tell a joke, something like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened relative to Narcan. <laughs> I don't know. I decided I should probably pull. I should probably pump the brakes on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I <laughs> Zach, I got a, I got a Y episode for you here. You got, you got a Y episode. I I'm, do. I'm I think this is a fun one. This actually came from. Oh, by the way, there's a nerd poll in the description. Uh, yeah, check out the nerd poll. It's in the description. Uh, this actually came from my... Uh, uh, this this occurred to me during our last um, pun episode stream, which are a ton of fun. Ooh. If you haven't checked them out, you gotta check out the streams. They're so good. Um, during the last pun episode stream, Zach, you you may recall a a circumstance in which there's a bunch of, bunch of birds on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, uh, counting crows, but um, tis. Uh, there were many birds on the screen. Boop, 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 boop. I, this one might be short. It might be like two hours. I don't know. The Night's Watch are called crows. This By. is a fun one. By the wildlings. And before that moment, when we were sitting there in that stream... It never occurred to me how weird that is. Uh, Zeb, who is unfamiliar with the book, said, isn't that, is that like a slur for them? Which is not, it, it's, it's like an occupational insult or maybe a nationalistic, like, sort of. Yeah. It's, it's adjacent to, it's insulting. Calling yeah. them a crow is belittling them. But, like, the Night's Watch doesn't seem to be all that affected by it either. It's not like, whoa, whoa, don't call me a crow. It's like, ugh, like rolling your eyes is the worst it's going to get. Now, it could be that they don't care that much about the wildlings, which is true for a lot of Night's Watch people. But Being, being called a crow does not seem to, to bother the watch. Yeah. Like, uh, specifically, Bran asks Bloodraven if he is the three-eyed crow and he says crow I used to be like yeah and he just seems to take that in stride right that's just one of the things yeah. that they are called now granted there are things you could call me that would take in stride uh and there's things you would call me that'd be very offended by yeah yeah but like, like late for dinner one time <laughs> no no I'm kidding uh uh, no, no, I'm kidding. I always arrive 45 minutes early. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I was late way more than one time. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, it, it's fascinating though. Like we don't have a ton of phrases like these in a song of ice and fire. Uh, this is something that other fantasy writers think a lot about. Is the like distaste and distrust between different groups and the ways they talk about each other and refer to each oh, other. hell yeah. Fantasy racism is one of my favorite things in the world to talk about. Uh, uh, because it, it allows us to look at those kinds of sensitive things through, like, the lenses of, like, elves. Uh, yeah. It, it, and, it, it, it abstracts it enough that it's much easier to talk about. And there's competent and less competent ways to deal with it. And I've seen some very good uh, allegories and some very bad ones. Oh, for sure. Uh, including uh, a Netflix-only movie that's very, very bad. But uh, Zach, Zach, which movie? Are we talking about the Will Smith movie with the orcs? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. I haven't it's, seen this. Tell me about this movie. I don't know. Do you want to go down this path? Well, the we'll save it. We'll save it for another uh, video. I think I, I have a I have a lot to rant about that, and I'd probably want to like skim it again to like revisit some of the things that really bothered me about it. But right. I thought it was some dumb surface level allegory, and then also the fantasy stuff. Like uh, the the allegory doesn't work with the amount of like really high fantasy stuff that's in there. You would, if you wanted to do that, you would need like a low fantasy modern setting where, you know, the maybe not even low fantasy, just like a less powerful magic uh, fantasy setting. I've heard uh, that Magic the Gathering does this fairly well in some cases, although I have not like I have not delved into it myself. I, I haven't delved into the lore super well. Definitely some uh, D and D settings work really well to explore, like dynamics of uh you know discrimination and uh stuff like that uh i've definitely played in very good campaigns that was an element of the story uh we don't get like other than daenerys's chapters have a lot to talk about slavery and uh there is some element of discrimination at play there it's not uh it's halfway between like uh chattel slavery and like uh roman slavery which manifested in different forms uh but we we see a little bit of that there and the like sort of uh cultural divide and uh a bit of a language divide i believe some other things like that but it it doesn't seem to universally manifest into like a, a like a people's thing since the fall of yeah. Valyria. Yes. Um, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. That's this is an entire video essay we're doing that is not connected to what we're talking about today. Uh, Correct. Hang on. What the? We can come back. That is that is a very interesting topic. We can come back to that another time. Yeah, For, uh, Valyria will be the better example of a uh, like uh empire with ethnic hierarchies and a system of oppression for those who are not in that hierarchy. Agreed. Agreed. Um, but let's, let's, let's dial back into the question at hand. The, the night's watch are called crows. Let's talk about crows. So So crows are birds superficially, right? Superficially. Um, the the night's watch wears f- uh, a flowing black cloaks yes so you could say, like 100% right if you want to you can say the night's watch appears to superficially um uh resemble crows um do you remember do you remember my brother's uh, Sam L. Tarley cosplay uh i no i don't know that i ever saw this Oh, my brother Sam. Yeah, we, uh, we've, I've, look, I've made this joke before, but I haven't seen it. Looks, looks very much like Sam Tarley. He, he, he really like does. The, the actor, the actor who plays in the show, whose name I'm forgetting. Uh, on, but uh, they they look very similar. Uh, not like you could differentiate them if they're standing next to each other, but it's enough that he could pull off a very convincing Sam cosplay. So one year uh, he did. And uh, do you, if you want to ever create the uh, like Night's Watch cloak in real life, I have one that he wore for that costume. Uh, what you do is you find uh, like uh, a black bath bat and uh, just sort of melt the bottom together so it welds together and then stitch a few of those together. And uh, I guess you could use black carpet stuff as well, but the like inside would be really rough. Uh, that makes a really, really convincing Night's Watch uh, cloak. Can we make and this that... a recurring segment? Uh, uh, cosplay lessons with Zach and Tom? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, I am preparing my uh, Con of Thrones cosplay. I am going to do a modernized version of a, a Song of Ice and Fire character for the AU we talk about uh, oh, nice, every time nice. we guess news. I think I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be a uh, modern businessman, Dario Naharis. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Are you going to spike your beard? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, should, Let's go. Uh, 
by the way, the, the actor who plays Sam Tarly uh, is called John Bradley. That's and, right. And Bradley. I just learned the name of John Bradley's hometown. Hang on, let me type this for you. Can you pronounce that for me, please? <clears throat> Weissenshaw. That's Weissenshaw. such a baller name. I'm sure I pronounced it incorrectly, but it is a baller name. The, right, that sounds like a like a flipping. Uh, 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 oh God! Why can I not remember the name of the Gothic Dark Souls right now? Uh, Bloodborne. That sounds like a Bloodborne name. Uh, is it? It's got to be Dutch, right? Uh, it's in Manchester. Oh wow! Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Uh. Anyway, this is also not relevant. But yes. Okay. So so the Night's Watch could, if if you want to be that surface level and just say that the wildlings are dunking on, like, when you see somebody with their pants too high, you're like, hey, look at Steve Urkel over here, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 which which implies that uh, there's a deeply ingrained fashion police in the wildlings. Ex- and I, please, I want that fan fiction. Actually, I want that fan art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, this, the name Crows unless I'm mistaken, was given in the second book, probably, uh, as the first time that they meet wildlings. Um, I would be damn astonished if the word crow is just superficial. Yes. Because the, the name of the fourth book is A Feast for Crows. Zach, why is it called A Feast for Crows? Well, it's a feast for crows uh, for, uh, I would say, several reasons. But I think the like, if you're going towards, uh, like, literal crows, the birds, they can be scavengers. Yes. And uh, there's, this is about picking up the pieces after a war that has uh, done untold damage and death to multiple different parts of the continent of Westeros that we've seen, and also uh, above the wall, there's been a lot of death and a lot of corpses that still haven't been picked up, which uh, are a feast for crows. Everybody get your uh, uh, interesting nerd club bingo cards out. Uh, Zach, is your computer on your chest? Dang it. Yes. <laughs> if, uh, if I hold it steady, it doesn't quack. I'm a little unsteady. I really liked um, uh, alt shift x's take on this um uh not to be confused with alt shift x obviously um very people uh uh where he the uh goes on this whole in his euron video he goes on this whole um uh, uh this whole diatribe on on the name of the fourth book uh 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 it is the aftermath of a war the only people who benefit from a war are the crows the people who who hunger for the flesh of of the 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 uh uh the innocent people of Westeros, people like Euron, people like Peter Baelish, right, who are who are opportunistic, who thrive when the rest of the world is rotting. Um so why are the Night's Watch called crows? curious crows is a thematically resonant turn of phrase in these books it is important in these books and of course there's a three-eyed crow one of the greatest mysteries of the books absolutely who is who is the three-eyed crow the three-eyed crow may be what is the three-eyed crow blood raven it might be bran stark or maybe it might even be your own great joy I'm going to say the three-eyed crow may be Blood Raven or maybe something else. I don't know if that's relevant. I'm just throwing I don't have a list, right? We're not we're not moving toward a theory. I just thought when that when that occurred to me, I thought that that was very strange. Because the Night's Watch appear to be good guys. They appear to be fighting against the forces that want everyone dead. But if they are 
but but characters in the story who are thematically crows are the things that want everyone dead, like Euron. Euron wants the destruction of the systems in Westeros, uh, uh, and uh, and the death of its people, so that he can gain power. He is a crow, uh, uh, in in the theming of the books. Is what are, what is what are the Nights Watch? Do you remember in the House of the Undying? I'm going to write this down. I think it's relevant. In the House of the Undying, Danny dreams of three dwarves, five dwarves. Uh, tearing apart a beautiful woman. Um, it is, the, it is commonly understood. I think that this is very fair. Those five dwarves are the five kings, right? And they yeah. are, they are tearing Westeros apart because of their, their, their ambition and their drive and their short-sightedness. Um, they could be described as crows in this, in this case, right? They are the hyenas, who are tearing Westeros apart, while Westeros is at its most weakest. At, at its most weak, I suppose. So what the hell is the Night's Watch? Crows eat flesh. I'm just naming, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just giving out crow facts right now. Yeah. This implies that they view the Night's Watch as scavengers, as... Yeah. Uh, someone picking at a corpse basically yeah which is interesting as the, the uh, parasites right um but 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 the night's watch is not in its present iteration uh, like feasting on on the entrails of the wildlings honestly they don't really have all that much to do with each other most of the time. Uh, uh, they trade at the ports sometimes. Um, and until the White Walkers came out, um, the, the Wildlings and Night's Watch, like, they kind of just didn't deal with each other. For, like, uh, uh, except in the instances where, like, a king beyond the wall rose up. Yeah. They, they usually don't bother each other all that much in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Granted, the wildlings don't usually get to go south of the wall because they're supposed to stop anything from coming past, so there's a restriction there. But most wildlings don't want to go south of the wall. That's a new thing because they're being pushed out by the others. Before that, wildlings were usually content to be wildlings. They lived there for a reason. And that's Presumably. not... Right, that's not... um Uh, uh, uh... That's not crow behavior, right? That is, um, that is gatekeeper behavior, right? Yeah, that, that is, is. That is, like, there's, you could make an argument for, like, a classist or racist sort of perspective to that action, which I would find interesting and compelling, but none of that is, like, feasting on the flesh of someone dead. None of that is desiring death, like crows yeah. so often do in, in these stories. Well, that that gets us to the interesting, like you know, lore about the Night's Watch, where certain Lord Lord Commanders may have had a closeness with the others. There's the uh, like face that you feed in. Uh, what's the part of the wall uh, with the magic face in it? Oh, the Black Gate. The Black Gate. Uh, this is where it might get to the point where maybe there was a previous darker role that the Night's Watch was supposed to take on. Yeah, I'm going to write that down. You ready? Could the name Crow be historical? And I'm going to circle that. This is as far as I got when thinking about this. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't have any, I don't have any theories about this, but this is like... Could this be reference to something that happened in the past? And this is like, um, 
a, a uh, uh, sort of a cultural turn of phrase that has been passed down that is like the last reference of an older version of the Night's Watch. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right, that's fine. I like that. I like that. That's fine. Could the name Crow be historical? Um, are, are there other things? We, we know that there are other things, right? There are other things that have been lost to history about the Night's Watch. Um, uh, the Night's King. The Night's yeah. King was in, his name was intentionally scrubbed from the history books. Yeah, they, they've censored their history before, so that people don't go down the same footsteps as somebody else, which I don't think is the way to do it, but that could be an excuse, and they censored it for other reasons, like it makes them look bad or reveals a secret that not everybody's supposed to be in on. The reason for them being called crows could have been lost or scrubbed, question mark? Yeah. Um, we'll put that up here, and then the knights king was scrubbed i don't know if that's a connection but it it could be now remember we're speculating that it that it's been lost or scrubbed this is all speculating but if we operate under that assumption these two things seem to be created uh, connected yeah so why why? Why? Why are they called crows? What else do crows do in the story? Well, crows talk. If we're ah. talking about, like, ravens. Crows talk? Yeah. Crows talk. You know, Mormon's raven talks. It's one of the more, like, uh, and, like, they send ravens for mail. Corv they have jobs. Corvids talk in A Song of Ice and Fire. Corvid Corvids talk about corn a lot. Although I think that one might have just been hungry. Quote, corn unquote this is uh i i am once again telling the folks at home uh to listen to the roy detrees audiobooks of a song of ice and fire because he pronounces corn 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 snow john snow this is these books are awesome <laughs> Um, I don't know. Is this? I don't know if this is the end of the video. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know either. But like, isn't this weird? It it is kind of weird that like this is one of the few like specific insults we get, other than uh, like more so in the show, uh, we get kneelers. Uh, sure. Yeah, but they but they describe everyone who submits to we understand why yeah. they call them kneelers right yeah we we get the concept behind that um, the only the only thing uh for crow is the color of their outfits and that's like there are so many other insults you could use granted i get why george might uh want to uh for personal out of book reasons want to make sure it's something that's not close to any real life insults uh or you know things of that sort but it's so specific, and crows have an important place in the story, too, which makes it interesting. What? What? Yeah, right. Because it's not like... If I, if I saw this in any other story, I, would, I might say they are called crows because of the color of their cloaks. And I would be like, oh, that's fun. But George Martin doesn't usually put things in for no reason. Like, like I think about the the like the mirror universe version of the Night's Watch, the Kingsguard. The Kingsguard are called white cloaks. They are called white cloaks because they physically wear white cloaks, but also because thematically a white cloak is an un an untarnished it is a symbol of purity yeah. and 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 chastity and 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 uh, honesty and honor and yeah. Jamie, and Jamie Lannister's story 
and the story of of uh, of a number of king's guards, including Barristan Selmy, maybe including Arthur Dane, depending on the perspective you want to take. Um, their story is about stains to their cloaks and trying to wash them. And I find that extremely yeah. compelling. The other and, version... and a white cloak works for that because, like, in white clothing stains very easily and it's hard to get those stains out as compared or at least make them less noticeable as compared to pretty much every other type of fabric especially black cloaks where you can hide your stains very easily Ooh, Ooh. Ooh. That might be it. you ever feel like you touched something yeah it is very easy to hide Stains on black cloaks. Ooh. Ooh. I'm looking up the... Y riff for a moment. I'm looking for the Night's Watch Oath right now. Uh, the That's a compelling point that I hadn't really thought of before. If we're going for a, like color theming to outfits you get like uh, uh the, the it's traditional like you know if you uh fight in the night uh if you dress to fight in the dark you're doing the things that you can't do in the light this is and if we think about like comic book characters uh batman is all dark whereas like brighter colors are usually worn on like superman who fights in broad daylight granted he doesn't have white he has like red in blue and a little bit of yellow. Yeah, but uh, like he power, power like, girls. Right now. He do, he doesn't wear a mask, right? Superman yeah. doesn't wear a mask. He he, he wears he wears the things he does proudly. And Batman and the Punisher and uh, uh, what are some other famous ones? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the Spider-Man antiheroes, and they're not clicking. Uh, but all of them fight in the darkness because well for batman like the city wouldn't support him to begin with and also uh there's a lot of like uh questionable things you know sometimes the punisher is straight up like i just know the people that i'm fighting are worse than me and uh i'm willing to do terrible horrible things to make sure that uh they don't hurt anybody else because the things they're doing are worse and uh obviously you know that doesn't work in a real life context uh I, sh I feel like i should point out for any vigilantes uh in the audience don't do that uh but uh that makes sense in a fantasy like world though right uh, there are things maybe beyond our comprehension maybe too powerful for mortals to trifle with we need people who are willing to do things most humans wouldn't do including who knows maybe they used to be like human sacrifice or something like that uh stuff that your average person's not gonna like sit comfortably with is why the night's watch was invented and that would also make sense why they send criminals there yeah because i think you probably have the guts for it already yeah the night's watch employs criminals and, this is something um and and uh and scp foundation the d-class personnel uh are death row inmates because uh one they're viewed as expendable like you know they were going to be put to death anyways we might as well have them come and do these things but because occasionally they'll be asked to do very morally questionable things and they want somebody who they don't need to get uh they probably won't get as much pushback from yeah, people they don't even uh, convince yeah exactly they're told their death sentence will be commuted uh and it's debated as to whether they get terminated frequently there actually aren't that many death row inmates uh globally to like staff all the uh scps that would probably need a ton of them so it's very likely that instead they might just have their memories wiped from time to time has always been my interpretation of it uh but, like, they they got people who they know have it in them to do something that most people would probably look at and not want to do. And 
maybe the Night's Watch is a very similar recruitment process. They get people in who might do things that, uh, you know, they might be okay with killing. They might be okay with hurting somebody. Uh, it's fascinating. Hmm. So Never now, really thought of that that way. Neither have I. This is very interesting. Because now we have... We, now, we, we have found the right questions i think yeah so crozy and Fle- hang on I, I let me i got a couple more things that i want to add that we've that we've gone over before we start talking about anything specific there are heavy themes of cannibalism in the northern plot yep and of course crozy flesh crozy flesh don't they this is, yes, this, they do. is, this like seems to me to be like, I don't know, the obvious answer, question mark. I don't know how that would manifest, but boop. Um, but, but, but that is interesting, isn't it? Here, how about we do one of these? It is very interesting. Boop. boop. They're called crows. Crows eat flesh. Full stop. Right. That's the, that's the end of the sentence. Um, so the the question we are now asking ourselves is if if we take if we take the black cloaks to be thematic opposites to the white cloaks what are the sins of the night's watch that they are hiding what is it that they have done batman style hey a blood raven style yeah. for the greater good. Well, that, and then we get. How the did they get that like, name? We don't know of any giants, uh, like south of the wall. We don't know of any children of the forest south of the wall. We just certainly don't know of any others south of the wall. It could be that their job is uh, like, look, we can't trust anything past there, and if it, like, you know, they might have to be. Uh, not just a gatekeeping force, but they might have to be a, like, I don't want to say exterminating force, but like a, you know, go commit violence uh, against people that we don't fully understand force. Oh, you think that they were, you think they were raiders like, uh, like Gregor Clegane? Maybe, maybe even more than that. Maybe they were like, uh, almost like pseudo valerians where their job where they like suppressed people uh where they like enforced a hierarchy of some sort how do we get that to tie in to the long night perfectly and it doesn't uh it's tough to say and this is where maybe like uh them having the black gate them having uh some like history of cannibalism and of uh weird relationships with the others and all that maybe that's where it ties in maybe they have different goals when the long night kicks in maybe uh i mean that's the the night gathers and my watch begins right that implies that their goal really kicks in during the long night uh i have the whole poem here you want it yeah night gather night gathers and now my watch begins it shall not end until my death i shall take no wife hold no lands father no children i shall wear no crowns and win no glory i shall live and die at my post i am the sword in the darkness i am the watcher on the walls i am the fire that burns against the cold the light that brings the dawn The horn that wakes the sleepers. The shield that guards the realms of men. I pledge my life and honor to the Night's Watch for this night and all nights to come. What if that means the long night, right? What if that is not just like the night night? What if it is, I pledge that I will be here throughout the duration of uh a magically inflicted like winter night a long night uh i will take whatever action necessary to prevent it from getting any further than the wall 
and I will use whatever tools at my disposal to bring forth a dawn. I will do anything necessary. Yes. Like Blood Raven. Yeah, and, and the horn that wakes the sleepers uh, could be literally, you know, using magical items. There are Holy magical shit! Um, is this... Could... could uh, 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 a definition of crow could be one who loves the dead. Yeah. Uh, is it gonna be... Is it gonna be... Does horn that wakes the sleepers mean... Is they, are they going to undead to undead combat? Is that what's going to happen? It could, it could be another thing too. That we are, uh, I mean, we already have fire zombies, Zach. There's also like waking dragons from or uh, waking dragons from stone, right? Or waking giants from stone or stuff like that. We we have we have uh, waking dragons from stone and waking giants from the earth. Yeah, it could be that that's like part of the like magical stuff they're going to do is that they uh have like a arsenal of magic items uh to use for the purposes of winning this war and they just don't use them when it's not you know night out Shit. and that could be why they're crows because uh they would stick around after a war that, you know, has a high casualty count, leaving a ton of bodies around. And we know the Night's Watch goes out to find their dead if they're able. They went to go look for Benjamin Stark, thinking he was probably dead. But they were on confirmation as to what happened to him, and they would have brought his body back. Maybe after a cataclysmic battle where they use every means necessary to kill anything in their sight, which means that wildlings would have 100% been caught in the crossfire. They, uh, they came back and collected the bodies of their dead and the weapons that had fallen because they need those weapons again, right? If it's like, if they need dragon glass and magical horns and flaming swords and specialized arrows and stuff like that. If they have all these special tools out there, you're going to want to bring them back for the next long night. Oh. Maybe that's why they're crows. From the people who remember the last time they had to pick up the pieces of a cataclysmic war. But that doesn't seem like a pejorative, right? People who pick up the pieces are different from people who feast on the pieces. Yeah. Right? It has a very different connotation. Right? People who people who pick up the pieces are battlefield medics and and um and coroners. And I wouldn't call a coroner a crow. I wouldn't call them a jackal, right? Nor would I. Isn't that like? And and you're right. The, uh, uh, that that seems to be what I thought that the Night's Watch did last time. But Crow implies that they were not good last time. That they didn't pick up the pieces. That they feasted on the corpse. Of, I of of something. What corpse did they feast on? In that that unpleasant analogy in the top right corner, that vision that Daenerys gets in the House of the Undying. What is the equivalent? Yeah. What what do, what does the Night's Watch feast on? Don't know. Uh, that what? might be something to turn over to our community here. Uh, yeah. Uh, fire off! Fire off some ideas because I'm I'm kind of into this. Same. This is this is really curious spy question. I like it a lot, and uh, I feel like I think about the Night's Watch a little differently now. Uh, if the, if they were truly like you know the most noble of places to be, if this was the most like true and great cause to dedicate your life to. 
why is it themed so morbidly and why is it just common to send uh prisoners criminals hardened criminals there sure they need the men but like you could argue that plenty of other places need the men uh we don't send our criminals there they must think that the criminals are of a benefit to the night's watch in a way that like I don't know, you wouldn't send them to a sellsword company who could always use more men. Uh, even the sellsword company would probably pay you for them. Uh, yeah. And uh, you wouldn't, you know, put them on the king's guard, even though the king could always use more people for protecting them, so you wouldn't want a criminal doing that. Yeah. Uh, so why is it okay for a criminal to be part of the Night's Watch? And, you know, why are you okay with that instead of a punishment? Granted, like, People don't want to be there, but if you had the choice between death and Night's Watch for me, I'd pick it. And if it was my life in a tiny cell or my life at the wall, I'd pick the wall every single time. Sure, my life's going to be in danger, but uh, that's also true when you stay in a confined cell full of rats for your entire life. Zach, I don't know if I have too much more to do here. Because, like, I need to spend some time thinking about this. I think this is a yeah. very... This is this is a very cool Y episode. Thank you for joining me in this, but, like, I'm... I don't know. I don't know. Right? Yeah, I don't I, know. I legit don't have an answer either. Zach, do you have anything that you want to... Like, you got any final points? Because I'm... Let, yeah. We can sign off right now. No, uh, uh, I say we sign it off. Leave it there in the comments. Love to hear your additional information. Yeah, maybe we can figure something out. Yeah, maybe we can do this as a crowdsourced theory. I think this is a really good one. Yeah. All right, everybody, have a great day. Uh, Zach, say goodbye. Goodbye.